Welcome to the Autosys training video. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to use Autosys objects to define jobs and explore different job creation methods. Let's dive in and explore Autosys objects in detail. As you start working with Autosys, you'll use various Autosys objects to design and automate your workloads. Let's learn about a few basic objects. Machines. A machine is a target where jobs run. It can be a real or virtual machine meeting certain criteria. The machine is on the network and accessible to Autosys. An Autosys supported agent based on the OS type is installed. The real machines and the virtual machines are defined in Autosys. Jobs and job types. Jobs are the basic building blocks of Autosys and job types determine the type of tasks the job performs. A job is a task or process that you want to automate. This task can range from executing a script, running a command, starting a program, or executing a cloud service. You define jobs by creating job definitions using attributes. Job definitions control all aspects of job processing, from submission through execution and completion. Attributes hold every info about the job, such as the job type, properties, and behavior. The job runs only when the specified starting conditions are met. On completing the execution, the job captures the run status and the exit codes. Autosys supports a box job to hold a group of jobs or box jobs. Each job contains mandatory and optional attributes. Some attributes are specific to the job type and some are common across jobs. Attributes specify the job's properties and control behavior. Using job types, you can specify the conditions that determine the job tasks and the job schedule. Autosys supports 60 plus different job types. Most job types require the system agent to be installed on the target machine. Let's start with four basic and most commonly used job types. Command job. Command jobs run executable programs and the commands on remote machines. When the execution is complete, the job captures the exit codes. The exit codes indicate the success or failure of the job. Box job. A box is a logical container for other jobs and boxes. Box jobs are powerful tools for organizing, managing, and administering large numbers of jobs that have similar starting conditions or complex logic flows. The box itself performs no actions, although it triggers other jobs to run. You can group the jobs sequentially and or in parallel and execute them in a logical flow. Unlike jobs, you needn't associate a machine to a box job. File trigger. Triggers job execution based on file availability. It waits for the file to be created, updated, deleted, expanded, or shrunk, or when a file exists or does not exist, and immediately triggers the next job. File trigger job remains in a running state until the file appears. Use this when you want to start a job as soon as the file arrives. The job completes as soon as the specified file event, such as creation, modification, or deletion, occurs. File watcher monitors for the existence and size of a file on the specified platform. The file watcher job stays in a running state while watching the file. When the file arrives, reaches the specified minimum size, and is no longer growing in size, the file watcher job completes successfully, indicating the file is ready for further processing. Let's now understand the job creation methods in Autosys. There are three primary methods you can use to create jobs, Jill, the Web UI, and the REST API. All three methods use the same set of attributes, and job definitions are always stored in the database. Let's explore job information language. Jill is a scripting language that is unique to Autosys that lets you define and modify assets such as jobs, machines, external instances, resources, and so on. Jill has its own syntax and contains commands. You use the Jill command to activate the Jill command prompt. The Jill command runs the language processor that interprets the job information language. You use Jill subcommands and attributes to define the job definitions. Examples of subcommands. Insert job. 
adds a new job definition to the database. Rename job, renames an existing job, and all dependencies reflect the changed name for that specific job. Web UI, a graphical user interface of Autosys that lets you create and manage jobs. REST API, Autosys also supports job creation and management through RESTful APIs, enabling programmatic control and integration with other automation tools and platforms. The REST API allows you to create, update, retrieve, and delete jobs using HTTP requests. This method is suitable for integrating Autosys with CI-CD pipelines or third-party orchestration tools, automating job management from external applications, managing jobs, calendars, and events programmatically. The REST API is documented via Swagger Open API and supports secure authentication. Let's enter our training environment and define a command job using Jill Interactive Mode. For this demo, we assume that the environment settings for Autosys are already in place. To create a command job, connect to the Autosys server, running on a Linux operating system, and open the shell prompt. From the shell prompt, let's enter the Jill command. The Jill prompt opens. Now let's enter the command job attributes and their values one by one. Provide a unique name for the job definition. Define the job type. Enter a valid operating system user ID authorized to run the command for the owner attribute. Ensure the user ID is defined in Autosys by your Autosys administrator. Similarly, provide the target machine name for the machine attribute. Ensure the Autosys system agent is already installed on this machine and the machine is defined within Autosys. If not, the job definition will fail. Define the command attribute. Specify the standard output and error file locations. Type exit when you are done defining the job definition. Jill Interactive Mode ends. Autosys loads the job definition into the database after validation by the Jill interpreter. If the attribute values are correct, Autosys creates the command job with the specified name and returns an exit code of zero, which means the job creation was a success. Let's start the job and check the status. To start a command job, open the primary and secondary shell prompts. Let's run the auto syslog command with option E in the secondary shell prompt to check the job status. Then in the primary shell prompt, we run the send event command to start the job. If the conditions of the job are met, the job starts executing. The messages under the auto syslog in the secondary shell prompt show the result of the start job command execution. You can run the autorep command with relevant parameters to check the status of the job. Autosys displays a report with data in different columns. The ST column shows the job status. The status SU indicates that the job run is complete with success status. You can run the autosyslog command with appropriate parameters to view the job output report. Let's create a file watcher job to check the existence of a specific operating system file on the target machine using Web UI. This file may already exist or is expected to arrive during the business process flow execution. Log in to Autosys Web UI and navigate to the quick edit to start the job creation. In the quick edit interface, click create. The Create Object dialog opens with the list of job types. Select the Autosys server from the Server drop-down field. Click the File Watcher job in the Object Type section. Autosys displays a window to create a File Watcher job. In the Primary Details section, provide the File Watcher job name, the Target Machine name, and a short description of the job. In the File Watcher tab of the Properties section, 
provide the file name with the full path that the job must watch. The minimum size of the file in bytes and the watch interval in seconds. Click the General tab and provide the user ID who runs the job. Click Save to create the job definition. Autosys displays a confirmation message indicating that the job has been successfully created. Let's start the file watcher job and check the status using Web UI. Navigate to the Quick View interface. Select the Autosys server from the Server drop-down field in the Search section. Provide the job name that you want to start and click Go. The Search Results section displays the job name. Select Start from the drop-down list and click Go. Click Yes in the pop-up message to confirm the job start. Autosys starts the job if the start conditions are met and displays the processed successfully message. To check the job status, click Refresh in the Quick View tab. Autosys displays the job name and its current status in the Search Results section. The status icon shows the job in the Running status. You can also view the job status in the Job Details section. After the file that is being watched by the file watcher job is available and is steady for 60 seconds, the status of the job changes to success. Let's now walk through a quick demo of creating a job using the REST API in the Swagger interface. Navigate to the URL. Replace machine name with the host name or IP address of your Autosys server. Scroll down to the Post Jill section and expand it. Click Try it out. In the Request Body field, enter the job definition. Click Execute. If the job is created successfully, you'll see a response code 200 OK. This confirms that your job has been inserted into the Autosys database using the REST API. Thank you for watching this Autosys training video.